In this episode, but I just kind of want to be a part of that change in the the social media space and kind of encouraging more of that. The biggest mistake that I see creators do to this day is,、um, I would say, I have a pretty good coping mechanism with、uh, like negative comments. But my biggest time management tips, I would say, is I've been doing this for ten years and only start kind of seeing you know these results and being、mm-hmm. able to make this my job. I would say maybe in the last three years. So. Part of why I am so motivated is, like, because my parents, you know, brought me and my brother here, and I, I, I do think a lot about everything that they had to give up. It wasn't until my skin really, really got bad that I had to still maintain that that confidence, and that really put me to the test. But I would say it's definitely fluctuated for sure. There's been times where I've been really insecure in my skin and really unconfident. Yeah, well, I mean, we hadn't ch- had a chance to meet each other. I know you、yeah. had a call with Miss Maria. No, very nice to meet you. Thank you、okay. so much for having me on. I'm excited to chat with you guys. Yeah, likewise. Nice to meet you. I was very excited to meet you because you, I check your YouTube, your Instagram account, and I was quite excited to meet you as a in person. Yeah, no, I'm super excited for this. So yeah, the first time we will have a discussion with a professional podcast speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm a professional, but <laughs> you are. You are. You definitely are. So yeah. To start this conversation, I was preparing you for our call. I was listening to your episodes actually, and、mm-hmm. just to have some inspiration and、uh, no motivation, how to talk. That's why I, I'm sure that you are example for many people in different way, and、uh, many of people who follow skin positivity accounts or acne awareness accounts. They know you probably just from one one side, and、uh, this side is amazing, and it、uh, and your work makes so much value worldwide. But I'm sure that behind every influencer, any creator, there is much more life. And、uh, I was trying to di- deep dive into this while like watching your YouTube videos, and when you were sharing something personal about your family, like even.、Uh, About your education, your dog, your skincare company, and so on and so on. So I was like, "Oh my God, how is she managing everything in her life?" So <laughs> I'm super、um, thrilled to know all your secrets today. Yeah, no, for sure. Ask me anything. I'm I'm excited to talk about this. And as you said, like I don't necessarily talk about it all the time. I mean, I I sprinkle it here and there. But yeah, excited to. See what questions you have for me. Cool, amazing. So let's start.、Um, so welcome again to Wellness in Chaos podcast, our super young podcast. And、uh, to start with, so some of our followers know you, some of them know.、Mm-hmm. Could you please present yourself? And I'm sure you're passionate about different things. So what are the things? For sure. So I'm very happy to be here. My name is Lavinia Rosanda.、Um, I'm 22, and I'm a full-time content creator and university student.、Um, I'm studying a dual degree in chemical engineering and business at the moment.、Um, that's really what, like, a lot of what my time is filled up with right now:、um, school and and、uh, work. And then I just launched、uh, my own skincare company last year called Nine to Five Skin. Amazing. And how? Why do you think your work, everything you do, is important? Oh, okay.、Um, I would say, like, well, I started in this content creating industry、um, in 2014, so I was 13 years old when I started posting on YouTube, and it really just stemmed out of like my love for beauty and video creating.、Um, I always loved watching different YouTubers growing up. But I think it has evolved into a lot more than that because I really started posting content that I wish I saw as a young teenager, especially dealing with acne, or just you know even when I wasn't、uh, dealing with acne, just comparing myself to beauty standards I saw online, comparing my makeup skills and all this、mm-hmm. stuff, and、um, yeah. you know I, I I was always really comfortable posting like in and like showing my real skin and showing my. Unfiltered makeup in front of the camera、um, in like a YouTube video, but I think when it came to like posting photos on Instagram, because Instagram used to be like a very different space, that's when I'd feel the pressure to like edit my photos or retouch them.、Um, and then you know, I just kind of made the decision I should be like 
you know, kind of having the same message all across. Mm -hmm. And it really helped my own confidence journey to just start being more authentic online and kind of push myself out of my comfort zone. So a lot of the content I post is, you know, for kind of what my younger self would have liked to see, but also for anyone else who's going through that, that journey. Um, and I just kind of want to be a part of that change in the the social media space and kind of encouraging more of that um, unfiltered beauty and just being a lot more mm -hmm. raw and, and real online. So the fact that you were sharing your journey online, it uh, affected hugely your self-confidence, right? Oh yeah, major, just because, you know, if I'm posting videos talking about how to feel confident in your skin, um, then when I'm with myself, I really have to be instilling the advice that I'm also giving, right? So um, I can't be telling people to be confident and then not be doing that myself or giving people tips on how to feel better in your skin than not doing that myself. So when I tell people, you know, don't look at yourself in the mirror and say all these negative things, it wouldn't be right if I was doing that and then, you know, advising the opposite. So um, It, it did kind of encourage me and it also made me a little more accountable because it's like if I'm representing this audience and I have to show up and be my most confident self for these people, then it kind of forced me to do that um, in my everyday life. And it just took the pressure off a bit. I think, you know, when I post like a makeup free selfie or post my mm -hmm. acne, um, it's like once it's out there, like what else am I having to lose? Like there's nothing, you know there's nothing scarier than that. So once I was overcoming those barriers um, online and in my personal life, then then I was able yeah. to really just become my most confident self. Yeah. Uh, I think many skin positivity influencers or body positivity influencers, we all have some crucial post or moment when we decided, yeah, this post or content will change my life. So it was the first time when we posted something without makeup, without edits. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this story when it was for you? Oh, yeah. Um, I think, like, it didn't really happen that, like, instantaneous for me just because I've been doing social media for so long. Um, some key moments that definitely stand out for me are just when I was just doing YouTube, like, no, no TikTok, no Instagram, and I would get the occasional comment of, like, oh, it's so nice to see someone else with acne, but I didn't really think mm -hmm. about it at the time because I wasn't necessarily posting Then I was just posting makeup tutorials. So then obviously I was makeup free at the start of the video and I wasn't thinking of it. Like I'm doing this great thing by posting my skin, but it was those comments coming in. And then I remember doing a video showing how makeup looks in different lighting because I realized like, you know, I do my makeup mm -hmm. and I'm in front of my ring light, but then when I go to the bathroom or, um, or when I step outside into natural light, the makeup obviously looks really different on the skin. So I made a video like that and that one did really well on YouTube. And that's when it made me realize like a lot of people don't know this stuff. For me, mm -hmm. I knew it because I was a creator. Um, yeah. and then from there, I kind of started on TikTok. When I, when I started on TikTok, I actually wasn't really dealing with much acne at all. My skin had really cleared up at this point because I was on hormonal birth control. Um, but then when I got off the pill, that's when my TikTok started gaining more, more viewers. And then at this point, it was kind of just a natural journey for me because I wasn't just going to stop posting on social media because I was already doing that. So I really just had to keep posting, you know, with my skin flaring up either way. And then it kind of happened more unintentionally, me posting that journey. But um, because I was already doing social media so much, it wasn't like I was just going to like stop. So I don't know if there was like an exact mm -hmm. moment, but it's more for me, it was more just like the accumulation over the years of people being like, oh, this actually really helps me when you you post this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like the fact that you started to post makeup videos like with unfiltered skin, it's still a big difference compared that many people they post on TikTok already with a filter on. Yeah. Trying to show that they're bare face, but in reality not. You know well, this. exactly. And I think the difference there was because I started on YouTube and I started in 2014, there were no like filters. And I didn't know like I would edit on my phone. Like I had no idea about how you could like <laughs> Uh, edit the video to have filters on it for like YouTube. I think TikTok has totally changed the game because yeah, a lot of people add them. So then when I transitioned to TikTok, obviously I would just film the video regularly. You know, I would never think to like put a filter on it. So I think that's yeah. like the key difference there. But yeah, I totally agree with you. It's it's selling this whole narrative on like that's not actually reality. Yeah. Yeah, Lavinia, and, uh, has you always been like that confident, or it's your confidence start to show up only when you started to post things online? Um, I would say like as a kid, I always like 
did have a lot of confidence and stuff, but it's definitely fluctuated during the years. Um, when I started getting acne at like 15, um, that really took a hit on my confidence. Um, and it, it's funny cause I wasn't, you know, nervous to like show my skin and videos and stuff when I would do makeup tutorials, but definitely like when I go to school, I'd always like be wearing makeup or when I'd go out. Um, and I don't think I really thought it was a lack of confidence for the lo longest time. Um, but then when I really started to think about it, um, and it also affected me like in relationships, for example, like thinking, oh, is my partner going to think of me differently if I, if I have acne and everything? And it really had to be this more internal work. And once I did clear up my skin on the birth control, um, I can't lie and say that didn't give me confidence, but I would say this whole journey of like having acne and then it coming and going, it kind of helped me build more consistent confidence regardless of what my skin looked like. Um, and it wasn't until my skin really, really got bad that I had to still maintain that, that confidence. And that really put me to the test, but I would say it's definitely fluctuated for sure. There's been times where I've been really insecure in my skin and really unconfident. Um, but all in all, like I know it, it's a journey and I think just sticking to it as you would like a workout routine or um, anything like that is the most important thing. Whether you have days, like good days and bad days, it's more about like overall consistency rather than how you feel that, that day, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, perfectly. And you moved from uh, Romania to Canada when you were five years old, right? Yeah, I was like, th uh, so we moved here in 2005. So I was like three and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember? Yeah. Can you share some maybe moment from your childhood that stands out like a defining experience and experience in shaping who you are right now? Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely think part of why I am so motivated is like because my parents, you know, brought me and my brother here. And I, I, I do think a lot about everything that they had to give up to be able to do that. You know, they already kind of had their lives started. They were in their 30s, had jobs, everything kind of going for them. And then they were willing to kind of drop everything and, and start from, from scratch. So I always felt like if they did that to bring me and my brother to Canada, then I should be doing everything I can to maximize on that. And I always took that very seriously with my education. I think um, my academics have already, always been a really huge part of my identity. Up until like recently, I've kind of detached myself a bit more from that because I realized I was maybe putting too much you know, of my self identity in my, in my grades. Um, but yeah, that's always pushed me to, to work really hard. And then I think also just, you know, the entrepreneurial side and everything, like I always told myself, like I want to, you know, be financially stable and I want to kind of have control over that. Um, you know, and that's kind of why I took the route I did, uh, school wise. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this entrepreneur spirit that you have, was it always in you or maybe somebody inspired you or some situation because you're a content creator for already 10 years um mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah i think well as a kid too and i guess this kind of goes back to to the story of when we we came here so my parents put me and my brother in like a ton of activities just to kind of get us you know more immersed in the culture and learning the language faster and stuff so every day of the week we had you know like mondays we had art class tuesdays we had skating mm -hmm. wednesday was swimming like they literally yeah. put us in everything um from sports to music and then they always told us like we want you to have outside of school we want you to be doing something that you enjoy we want they wanted us to be doing like one sport thing and then one like mental thing so i did like piano and dance um and then i did some sports like in school and stuff but i was always doing a lot and then in high school um, I did a cosmetology program. Like we were always doing lots of activities outside of school. So I think that helped both me and my brother with like, just, you know, diversifying and finding things we, we like. Um, I mean, I think I always knew that I wanted to run a business. I always just had that incline as a kid. I also always wanted to be an adult when I was younger. Um, I, I remember being like, eight years old and I had like a key card to my room because I thought it was like my office. Like I always wanted to like <laughs> yeah. have a job and like go to work. Like I always wanted that. So now that like I am, I always say like, and now I'm 22, but I feel like I'm like 30 because I like, I feel like I'm just like, you know, in the, <laughs> the next um, kind of stage in, in my life. So I've always kind of wanted to, to grow up and, 
and work. And I've always had that inclination to run a business, but I've always just had lots of ideas flowing. And even when I started this, my podcast, Loud Talk, I remember coming to my mom and I'm like, do we still have that mic um, around? Because I used to be really into music. Uh And she's like, oh gosh, she's like, what are you doing now? Like, my parents would always say when I was little, like, I could not, I was always just like bored of everything. I would start something and then bored of it and I'd want to start something else. So I think that's part of it. And I think that's why I like content creating so much because it's always changing and there's always something new that I can do, but it really just started out of like passion. And now like it's become my, my job, but, um, I didn't like start it thinking, okay, like I'm going to make this work as a, as a career. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like once I was reading your comments that like you, you shared your age online or you ask, ask the question, like, right. hi guys, um, how do you think how old I am? Yeah, and people yeah. started to reply like this around like 30 numbers I- because, <laughs> because of your experience, extreme experience yeah. in everything <laughs> that already a businesswoman with, you know, many jobs, many plans. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's true. Like, it's like when you say your number, sometimes I just want to distinguish personality from numbers. Numbers are nothing. Experience is everything behind each person. For sure. It's so funny because at that point when everyone was guessing my age and I said it, my real age after, I got so many messages of people like apologizing, being like, <laughs> I, I didn't mean to call you old. And I'm like, no, it's okay. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but yeah, that was funny. Yeah, there's this physical age and uh, I guess mental age. And yeah. when you have so much experience in your life, you just uh, progressively uh, get mature regarding mm-hmm. of your physical age. So maybe it's the same thing that you experience as well. Mm-hmm. For sure, yeah. And you have mentioned uh, to me once that your parents are your biggest inspiration. Why? Why do you think so? Um, I think it goes back to just the whole idea of like, you know, they they were able to kind of start everything from scratch in in their thirties for, for me and my brother. And that's definitely stuck with me a lot. I know even um, this summer, like I went back home to Romania and my grandma found like um, documents from when my parents applied to, to move to Canada. And one of them was like just my dad's handwriting of like what they wanted to say and, and the reasons. And one of their top things that they said was we want to like provide our kids with a better life and everything. Um, and I was like, trying, like I was doing the math in my head and I'm like, well, you guys applied to move to Canada before me and my brother were even born. So I, that really hit me hard. Cause I was like, wow, like you guys were thinking about, you know, your kids' futures before you even had kids. So, um, I think that's always just pushed me. Like I, I want to make the most of what I can. And that's always just been a big like push in terms of like my education and stuff for sure. It's like how you show that how much you're grateful for everything you have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like they had to like, you know, redo their um, education. It's not the same. Like it's just not recognized the same here, which is really unfortunate. And that's like a whole nother conversation. But um, then it's like, you know, I'm given this chance. So like I need to capitalize on like that and um, make sure that I'm getting the most of my education if they, they did this for us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's so amazing, you know, when parents give you so many opportunities when you are a kid just to try out things and understand what is good for you, what is not good, and just to have this amazing experiences. So it's definitely, yeah, yeah. birthday money on like makeup and doing these videos that like no one was watching, but they just like trusted what I was doing. And then they knew it made me happy. And now like, I wouldn't be here today if I they didn't kind of just let me explore that avenue. Yeah, amazing. And I have a question regarding your education. So you choose you choose a chemical engineering, right? Mm-hmm. And it's quite specific. And I wonder, like, uh, why did you choose this field, and uh, how do you see it influencing your future ventures, and specifically in skincare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't like in high school. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I um, always maintained super high grades, and I was really inclined towards like science and math. Um, and I, I didn't think of engineering at all because I just, I didn't know much about it, to be honest. I just thought like, oh, I don't really think I want to do that. I knew I didn't want to go into like anything medicine related. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll just like go into business. Because I feel like when we're younger, we don't really know like all the options out there. We really just think of like the main, main like five jobs that you could have. Um, so I thought, okay, maybe I'll just go into business. But I just didn't feel like it was like everything that I could do, especially since I, I really enjoyed like physics and all of that. So it wasn't until my, actually my high school physics teacher told me, you know, would you ever be interested in engineering? He like signed me up for like this job shadow. And then 
just like through talking to more people, I'm like, oh, maybe I would like engineering and maybe it's more than just like building bridges, which I really was not interested in. Um, and then I knew that uh, I did like some research and I knew that with chemical engineering, then you could then go into cosmetic engineering. So I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe I can bridge the gap between um, my love for like math and science and then also my love for like cosmetics and um, this whole industry. So the school I go to, like where I'm at, it's very oil and gas focused. And even when I was working my internship, it was very oil and gas focused, but um, you do get a lot of knowledge in like the principles of process and everything. So I don't know exactly like what I will do with it later on, but I think it's yeah. um, a really good degree to have. And you learn a lot about problem solving and just how to tackle different situations. So you can kind of use it um, in every industry. And I think too, like with building my brand and stuff, it does give me a bit more credibility to, to have that background. And then with my business degree, you know, um, kind of just, yeah, aid my, my business um, in that sense too. Chemical engineering and business, it just sounds super sexy. Yeah, I'm almost done, but I'm, yeah, I'm definitely at my, like, I'm definitely at my uh, burning point here. <laughs> like I'm ready to be done. <laughs> and how many years do I need to study more? Um, so I have, um, I'm, we'll be done engineering this, this semester. I'll be getting my, in Canada, we get like iron rings. Um, if you're an engineer, so every engineer gets like a ring that they wear on their pinky. And it's basically like a promise to society that you will work to protect, um, society and like what you are working towards. Wow. Um, yeah. and then business I'll be done, um, next December. So you are doing just two separate educations. I, I thought it's like together combined but it's two it separate is, education it is combined so i'll graduate both of them at the same uh -huh. time i'll graduate mm -hmm. both next year it's just the way i took my classes so technically yeah. i'll be done all my engineering classes this semester and then i'll just have a few more for business yeah it's just cool. the way i like structured my class but yeah it is a combined program yeah wow sounds amazing and the uh, time flies fast anyway yeah yeah <laughs> Especially when we care about our mental health and we sleep yes. enough, eat enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. and we cover enough. And uh, I want to go back to content creation topics. Since mm -hmm. I have mentioned, like, you started your YouTube channel 10 years ago. So yeah. you definitely saw how it's changing. What's the biggest changes you have seen so far? How do you think? Oh, it's, it's changed so much. I just think like the, I mean, the biggest thing that everyone knows, like attention spans, like people, you know, really do enjoy just like watching a TikTok. And I think even TikTok is changing now because people find it hard to even sit through a few minute TikTok versus like a YouTube video. Um, for me, I'll always say like, I'm still like a YouTuber at heart. I still post on YouTube consistently just because that's what I love to do. I love to like just sit down and, mm -hmm. and film a video or even if it's a vlog, um, I think it's, it's more my forte, of course, like I, TikTok's my biggest platform right now and I'm, I'm posting on there consistently too, but my heart will always be with YouTube and I do hope that, you know, eventually people do go kind of back to the long form because I do really enjoy that. Um, but I think it's changed a lot. I think, you know, in terms of even just uh, being more realistic online, that's changed a lot. I think people have more awareness of kind of that social media versus reality as well. And, um, I mean, social media has only been around for so long that we're still seeing the effects mm -hmm. of it now and we'll keep seeing the effects of it later on. Um, I think it's such a great place for so many reasons because it's allowed people to come together and, and find kind of their community. But of course, there's a lot of negative that comes with it too, but it's definitely evolved. And I think the biggest thing about being a content creator is being adaptable and always willing to hop on what's kind of new, like I was very stubborn at first when TikTok came out because um, I didn't get on TikTok till like 2021, so mm -hmm. a bit later. And I was very much like, no, like short form's not for me. I do YouTube, but like um, definitely like I wouldn't be where I was today if I didn't get on TikTok. So I think the biggest yeah. thing is you just have to be adaptable. And like, you know, if Instagram wants you to be posting reels, post reels. If TikTok wants you to be posting stories, like you honestly just have to be adaptable if you want to make that work and just, you know, work with the platforms you have to then build the platforms that you really do enjoy. So you well, can use only one channel, right? You have to use all of the channels possible. I would say so. Like, I mean, there are lots of creators that I know that only post on TikTok or only post on Instagram. I just think like, it's probably best to just be posting everywhere because you also never know like where 
people want to go and you know one day like an app could be really popular and then the next like no one goes on there right so um i think it's best to diversify as early on as possible um and just kind of keep up with with all the platforms that you can yeah and you said that you enjoy more uh, long form content right mm -hmm. and uh, like in your opinion what do you think uh what makes uh, a good long form video content and uh for those people who want to start, like, should they care about all this, uh, you know, equipment like microphone, good camera, or just they just should start? I would always say just start. I actually didn't get a, a camera for my YouTube channel um, till last year. I filmed all my YouTube videos on my phone. Um, I just used, like, the back camera, and obviously as the phones get better, the quality gets better, but like I look back at some of my old videos, like the quality wasn't great, but like I made it work. You know, I was posting, I didn't even have like lights or anything. I just filmed in front of a window. I didn't have a tripod. I would like balance my phone on like books or something. So I would just say always just start. Like there's no point to, you know, kind of invest all of this money into like equipment and stuff. Like you might not even enjoy it, right? So like just start and start out of passion. I think the biggest mistake that I see creators do to this day is start something with. The idea that they're going to blow up overnight and it's going to be this whole thing and they're going to live that social media dream because that's not again that's not reality and unfortunately that's what's shown on social media which can be a bit deceiving um like i've been doing this for 10 years and only start kind of seeing you know these results and being mm -hmm. able to make this my job i would say maybe in the last three years so when people are like oh i tried posting for a month or i bought like this fancy <laughs> camera and everything and it didn't work i'm like well just keep doing it for 10 more years and then we can we can have a conversation right but um i think just you should start for the right reasons you should start out of passion and if you are starting out of passion you'll just start it with what you have and build up from there if you have the money to spend on a camera or equipment that's awesome but like don't go into it kind of expecting like a huge return from from the start if you do get like if a video goes wrong that's great but it's like don't go into it with that mindset because i think it'll only lead into like disappointment yeah and, uh, did you have such moments when you were thinking no i don't want to do that anymore it doesn't bring me any results and i want to give up did definitely you yeah definitely i mean i put so much time and effort into my youtube channel i was posting three times a week every single week um and not getting that much return out of it and i felt really discouraged because i'm like i'm putting in so much work and effort and i feel like i'm not getting the recognition i deserve and especially when i would get comments too being like your videos are so underhyped like how, how do you not have more views right um i'd be like this is really frustrating but the biggest thing now is I really do think everything in life happens for a reason and you have to just, if you trust in your path, you really just have to keep up the hard work. And um, I even had someone ask me like, you really posted on YouTube for this long, just like, you know, and not getting results. And I'm like, yeah, because I, I loved it. And of course it would have been great to get that like validation through the views, but I'm now thinking about it. Like I have, you know, this is my job right now and I'm in my last year of school and mm -hmm. it's hard to balance every day, like, you know, between like trips and um, projects and stuff. Like it's so hard to balance right now in my last year of school. But if I would have had this much work at the start of my university career, I wonder would I still be doing it? Would I still be pursuing it? Would I have mm -hmm. more, um, yeah. like more resentment for my degree because I'd be like, it's holding me back from, so now I'm at the end of it. So I'm like, you know, timing is everything. And I do think everything happens for a reason. So I'm very happy that I didn't gain like all that, you know, earlier on. Cause I think I, I wouldn't be where I, I am today. And I also think it shaped me more as an individual to put in all that hard work and to now be getting, um, the recognition because then I, Right now, I want to make a quick pause. As many of you guys know, I used to have severe acne condition. Right now, my skin is not perfect. Sometimes I'm breaking out, get acne scarring and pigmentation. And I can get upset. I'm just a human being. And the tool that helps a lot my skin and mood is red light therapy, especially this red light therapy LED mask by Current Body. I use it over six months and what I have noticed. My skin feels glowing and acne scarring fades away much faster. 
Additional bonus, it was scientifically proved that LED light therapy helps with our mood, especially during these dark days. I use this mask or in the morning or in the evening, depends on when I have time. It takes just 10 minutes to care about your skin. If you want to try this LED mask by Current Body, I have 15% discount for you. My code is Maria with double I C B. Also, the link is in description box. Was able to understand that hard work more. I think the dangerous part is creators nowadays who, you know, will film a few videos, put in some time, and then they get all those benefits right away because um, I don't want to say it's like handed to them. That's not the, the right wording, but I just don't think then they recognize. Um, and then when, you know, views maybe go down and they're not getting that same um, mm -hmm. validation, I think it's harder for them to be like, oh, like I just need to keep being consistent with it. So that's, that's the most important thing. So overall, like, yes, I was definitely, there were times where I was very discouraged, but now looking back, I'm very grateful for the journey that I've had. Yeah. And Lavinia, do you think like uh, most of the creators, they start uh, posting just for sake of ma making money and forget that it's not their ultimate goal? I think a lot of people do. I don't want to say all because I think there's still lots of people who yeah. do have passion in the industry and just have a message they want to share. Um, but yeah, I do think a lot of people maybe start for the wrong reasons and then they don't feel as motivated and then they do feel burnt out quicker posting a video. Like for me, filming and video creating and doing things like this, like fill my cup and, and bring me energy. And of course, there's some days where I'm like, uh, like, you know, tired from it because I do this every day. But all in all, majority of the time, I do feel more energized from doing what I love. So I think that's that's the biggest thing. Like people have to really look at it and be like, is this something I truly love? Do I have um, intention with this? Do I have a goal behind this? Rather than, you know, the, the money's great, the the uh, brand deals and all of that, is, it's great. But it's like, what's your what's your goal and what's your message behind all of that, you know? By the way, what is your the most favorite moment through all this content creation, well, uh, like content creation work? Like I know mm -hmm. maybe receiving some comments or maybe while filming or editing. What is your favorite thing? Well, there's a, there's a few things I can say. I would say the biggest thing is like just kind of an escape. It's always like an escape. Like when I can just like sit down and film. Um, there's definitely been some moments where I've gotten you know like brands send me products from brands that I would save up. Um, yeah. I, I would say like a big one was like Mac cosmetics for me because I remember saving up to buy a lipstick from them. And I like spent so long trying to decide what color to get. And I think because I spent so long, I ended up buying a color that I actually never used because I'm like, this is such a big moment. Like I only can pick one, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so then when I got, got packages from them, that was like one of those, it just kind of like healed my inner child because I was like freaking out yeah. on the inside. Um, and then I'd say another like really special moment was when I went to LA with Mac again, because mm -hmm. I got to bring my brother and my brother's actually the one who created my YouTube channel. Like, you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now he's my uh, video editor for my podcast and my YouTube channel. So that was a really special moment because it was like very full circle that I got to bring him and it was with a brand that like I could never even dream of like affording when I was younger. So um, that was a very like pivotal moment. I think I was like standing there and just thinking like, am I like really here right now? Or is this like a dream? It felt like really, really insane. Yeah. Wow. Pinch, me, pinch me moment yeah it, exactly a lot of like the imposter syndrome too of just like why am i here but that's another conversation for sure wow cool and a question like how do how much do you usually spend like daily or weekly for creating all the content you have like on all the channels yeah it, it's tough to say because it, it fluctuates so much like my day-to-day -day looks probably very different than if i wasn't in school um because you know like I would say, you know, certain days of the week I'm at school, like I leave my house at 6.45 a.m. and then I don't get home till like 6.45 p.m. So there's not much like content room for those days. But then the days that I don't have classes, you know, I try to spend more of my time doing content. So um, but I don't know, on average, like in a week, I'd probably spend like more like close to like a full-time job doing content. But then mm -hmm. um, when I have a week off like from school or something, then I overload on that to try and and kind of um you know get more content so that i have stuff to post when when school gets busy for example so it, it really varies i would say um a lot like it, it yeah it just really depends like there's some weeks that are 
super, super crazy. And then other weeks, you know, I've recorded a lot last week so I can post, post that content. But, um, I would say like maybe mm-hmm. probably, it probably averages out to like a normal job. I don't know. Yeah. Um, do you have kind of like this uh, social media dependence when you're checking constantly the comments or social media? And if yes, do you have any tips how to deal with that? For sure. I mean, yeah, I can't lie like and say, oh, I don't read my comments. Of course, I read my comments. You know, I want to see what people um, are thinking of the content stuff. Um, I would say I have a pretty good coping mechanism with uh, like negative comments. Of course, there's been ones that get to me. And I would say the only ones that really do affect me are when they attack like my personal being. Like if they say something about my looks or whatever, I don't I don't care about that because like they don't they don't know me like it's just a random comment. Um, but when people kind of attack my how should I say this like a lot of times people do make assumptions without kind of getting to know me Mm -hmm. first um I remember someone like someone commented like oh like um you're just so lucky to like you know have um all this stuff and I that kind of impact me because I'm like I wouldn't say I'm lucky like I put in a lot of work I'm very grateful and I'm very privileged to like be where I am today but it didn't just come without any work right so to those comments I usually will respond and say like hey like actually like I've been doing this for 10 years I've been you know I I used to be in your position then um I usually find that turns into a very positive interaction where the person is like oh I'm I'm sorry I made that assumption it's kind of a learning lesson for them as well to not kind of jump to conclusions like that but um I would say the biggest tip is don't take anything personally and look at comments very neutrally right like even if there's a hundred comments of people saying they love you so much and they think you're the greatest, like don't take that too literally because again, those people don't know you and it can get to your head really easily. And then also on the vice versa, if a hundred people are saying they hate you, don't take it. Like you have to just look at everything as a neutral opinion um, and take it as it is, but also always be open to constructive feedback, right? If someone's telling me I hated this video because the audio was bad, I shouldn't be like offended. I should just be like, okay, I do to fix the audio you know maybe they could have said that differently but that's like you know so um yeah just don't take anything too personally i mean online is online i think um if it helps certain people to block out certain comments or not check their comments definitely do that for me it doesn't personally affect me that much and if anything i think one of my best coping mechanisms is actually to kind of like play fun at the comment like if someone makes a stupid comment like calling me ugly or something i'll just like respond with like um like a video where I do like a insane makeup transformation to kind of like yeah. make their point, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like they feel dumb yeah. for commenting it in the first place. So um, stuff like that. But I never really like get all try to argue with people in the comments because uh, there's no, there's no point to do that. It's just a waste of time and energy. Yeah. yeah. I love your way how to deal with this nasty comment. <laughs> yeah. to show Like not in a, not, not on purpose, matter. but just to use this comments an opposite way. Yeah. And uh, you have your skincare brand that is called nine to five and you yeah. created this skincare brand for men together with your friends or as I understood, or um, students. Like, uh, can you tell us more about the behind story? Why did you decide that, yeah, we need to have this specific line? Yeah. Um, So first off, the line, yeah, it was started specifically, like, to target men's skincare goals. Now we actually, we just released yesterday that it's rebranded to, like, skincare for all. Um, And I'll I'll explain a bit of that. So basically, I was working, last year I was on internship working um, an engineering job, like, typical 9 to 5, um, Monday to Friday job in office. And, um, one guy that was on my team, he's a mechanical engineer and we actually lived like super close to each other. So we would always take the train and just talk like business. Like he's very entrepreneurial mindset. So we would just like go back and forth with different ideas. And I would always bug him telling him like, you need to be wearing sunscreen. Like you don't understand. And he's like, I don't, you know, I don't deal with skin issues. I'm like, no, you need to be wearing sunscreen. Um, so because of that, then he was like, ask me, okay, what other skincare do I need all of this? So that's kind of where the conversation started. And then I remember he was asking me like, you know, um, about creating a skincare line, how hard that would be. And we really just like, it just came out of conversation. Um, and I had worked in formulation a bit before. And then obviously like I have a lot of background in the cosmetic industry, but, um, he, he didn't, he didn't know anything about skincare, like all of that. So that was very new. And then we, we're like, okay, how hard could this really be to just like start it on our own? So 
we just got to planning. We knew nothing about starting like a line. We really just like researched and like started ordering ingredients, started uh, mixing formulas in my old apartment. Um, it was very like, you know, just like testing and everything. Uh, we started designing our packaging. Like it was very just like baby steps of like, okay, we would do this thing. And it's like, okay, what's next? We got packaging. What's next? We do this. So it took us like about four months to finalize our formulas. And basically we wanted to create, uh, the idea behind the brand was to create a very simplified system. Um, so our system's three steps, but I found a lot of skincare systems out there that, you know, usually have just a couple steps. They always miss something. They're either missing sunscreen mm -hmm. or they're missing a cleanser or they're missing, um, you know, a retinoid or a treatment product. So I'm like, why is no one targeting like just the main essentials that you actually need in a routine? Because every time I get like a set from a skincare line, it's like, okay, I need to add my own sunscreen to it or I need to add my mm -hmm. own to it. So you always still need to end up getting something else. So we created, you know, products that are like three in one, two in one that have like everything you need all in the one product. But that's not like a, a men's body wash that like is like a nine in one. You can like wash your car with it. And you can wash your face with it too. You know, like it's, um, it's actually like backed and like we have really good ingredients in it. So that's how that started. And we finished our formulas in about four months. And then we spent another like four months testing them with our friends and just getting feedback on them and everything like that. And then we just launched last September um, brand. And then we wanted to target men because we think there's a lot of like misinformation around skincare with men you know they're not really prioritizing it not seeing the the benefits the one issue though is we thought you know if we say it's skincare for men men will be more confident to use it and we thought women will use it regardless but we actually saw the opposite effect of women thinking oh this isn't for me because you know it's targeted at men so we were like let's just remove all of that from it let's just make it skincare for everyone it's you know uh neutral like a gender neutral set that's just really for the person on the go who doesn't have a lot of time for um like a super hectic routine it's nice three easy steps and our products have no fragrance to them they're just you know very simple but still get the job done um you know simple but you're not losing out on like any of the important ingredients that you need on a daily basis so um that was yeah that was the backstory of the brand that's kind mm -hmm. of today and um yeah it was just the two of us that that started this and and kind of work together to create this brand. You know, when I saw your skincare brand, one of my first thoughts were like, okay, if a girlfriend of the guy who bought your skincare uh, stays over his place and she doesn't have any skincare, so she can easily use his skincare. Yeah, and it would be so perfect. And it's like, you know, like a perfect, uh, like St. Valentine's Day. Yeah. No, definitely. It's, it's so easy for that. Like, I mean, I never like, that's the my boyfriend only uses nine to five now and um i never have to bring my skincare because i i like i just use i just use the the products from us so yeah it's um it's definitely been like a lot of like work in progress and just like taking little steps at a time since it's um very like new but it, uh, all, all good things take a lot of time to grow and i think that's another thing like with social media i think people only show like the huge successes and like, you know, the overnight growth, but yeah. um, any big brand you see out there has taken time to grow. It doesn't just happen overnight. So that's really just what we're um, working on right now. Does the uh, connection with many skincare brands help you in this case? Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, I've met so many amazing founders who are just so willing to, um, to share their insights who have been in the industry yeah. who have been you know running their brands for 10 plus years and they're like you know what like these are the things that I did at the start that I would avoid these are the things that I would advise and just um, really really great people that have kind of you know given me their their mm -hmm. tips um, and everything like that so um, yeah definitely and even just like having the ability to try so many products has allowed me to find the holes in the market and see like, okay, what, what's missing and what could we, what, what mm -hmm. could, we, could add value for sure. Dimitra, by the way, I want to ask you right now. Yeah, I, want to yeah. I want to ask you, do you use any skincare? Yeah. I just wanted to say that uh, I don't have any skincare routine and I want to ask like, what's the, the main risk not to have a skincare for 
anybody. The, the biggest thing is sunscreen. Like out of all things, like, you know, there's a, m- a bunch of amazing skincare ingredients that you could be using, but the biggest risk with not using skincare is not using sunscreen. And a lot of people think, you know, oh, like, you know, it doesn't affect me. Like, even if you're sitting inside, UV rays come through and it's not just about um, burning or, you know, color, like tanning the skin. It's about the actual damage that it does to your um, skin cells since it actually accelerates the aging. Um, so, you know, and then potential risks to like skin cancer and um, different things like that. So overall, sunscreens, yeah, the biggest, the biggest risk you run by not by not doing that and then of course when you use the sunscreen you should be washing it off at the end of the day so that it's not like clogging your pores and stuff so that's why then we bundled it with the cleanser and then we put in the the night cream with the retinol that kind of um helps reverse like the effects that you may get from like some sun damage okay okay so i should start using uh, at least sunscreen right yes i would say number Mm -hmm. one (laughs) sunscreen and uh, some simple cleanser would be yeah just perfect. take it off at the end of the day yeah exactly yeah, i need to check i need to check it yeah it's always uh, such a question to use spf during the winter when it's like just so gloomy so dark daily do you use uh sunscreen in canada during the winter oh yeah and actually where i live it's the sunniest city in calgary so wow. we get sun 24 7 oh that's twenty four seven. We, it's like dark most of the day, but when we do get sun, it's sunny. So, um, very important. But even if you live somewhere cloudy, uh, the sun does not care if there's clouds outside. Those UV rays, they might be like filled, you know, not as strong, but they're still, um, getting to your skin. So it's so important. And even we've educated people, um, of darker skin tones. Like my boyfriend, he, he has much darker skin than me. So at first when I met him and he wasn't using sunscreen, he's like, I don't need sunscreen, you know, like it it doesn't affect me yeah. uh, my skin's like naturally protected and i'm like yes like mm-hmm. from, you know burning because there's two types of uv rays there's uva and uvb uvb is what um burns the skin so when people have um, darker skin that's kind of protecting them they have that natural um spf factor in there but uva rays don't care what your what your um natural skin tone is that's what causes the damage in the skin cells and can cause like because it penetrates deeper so um regardless of your you know gender skin tone whatever um even your environment like you mentioned if it's cloudy out you should be using sunscreen i would say daily and no one uses like the actual recommended amount like you know the recommended two fingers full of like an spf like at least 50 but it's like at least you should be using something you know rather than rather than nothing for sure yeah and i guess like, I guess, like many factors affect aging not only like uh using uh skincare right like nutrition your habits and uh let's say if you have bad nutrition in place or any oh, yeah. habits can it be can uh using some uh good skincare routine be a solution in this case i would always say it's not a solution it's just another factor that you should be taking yeah. into place um that's the that's the misconception with you know even my struggle with acne a lot of people just immediately assume oh it's because you have a bad skincare routine oh it's because you're using bad products and it's like no it's like this is you know a different health issue that i'm working on in um in tangent with with my skincare routine but um i would say skin skin health you know 30 percent of that might be your skincare routine the rest of it definitely as you mentioned comes from your nutrition your health your your sleep your stress all of that i know for me like i'm under a lot of stress with school so then that causes me to break out and that's something you know i I have to work on but unfortunately as like exams are still around and stuff that will just uh keep being there so it's definitely i wouldn't say use skincare to reverse we use skincare to prevent um you know, damage and all of that in yeah. in conjunction with with other healthy habits like drinking enough water, eating well, sleeping well, all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah amazing. Dimitri, we'll just go on other level of your health improvements if you add sunscreen. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to age fast. I want to be young and uh, handsome for long. <laughs> yeah, it's all about just aging gracefully, right? Like I think also there's so much like bad like you know energy around like aging and this whole like Mm -hmm. scared to age and i mean at the end of the day it's such a privilege to age but if we can um just allow the skin to be in its healthiest state while we age i think that's the the best thing we can do yeah it's a topic about aging is especially around females it's very sensitive 
for females because for men, yeah, the world doesn't talk so much about that. Definitely, yeah. 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 And I think it's, you know, like letting that natural aging will occur. And I think that's something we should all be so grateful for. But um, of course, we don't want to like accelerate it. Right. So that's why yes. and, and sunscreen is not just about the aging, but it's also just preventing, you know, and Absolutely. protecting, from, you know, yeah, skin cancer and, um, you know, different dark spots and stuff. Like there are so many different benefits to why you should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lavinia, and you cover so many roles in your life, as we already know, being a student, engineer, content creator, entrepreneur, daughter, sister, girlfriend, mm -hmm. dog owner. Please share with us all your time management tips, how are you able to <laughs> deal with everything. For sure. me, you are time management queen, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's been a long time coming. And I think one of the biggest things that did help me is that I've just been so spread with my time ever since I was little. Like I mentioned, my parents just put us in everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we always just had to be really good at that. And especially when, you know, me and my brother didn't drive when we were younger. So I'd be like, okay, we're going to his hockey game. Then we're going to my thing. And then I have to do, I would do my homework at the, the ice, you know? So we would always have to find like the time to do everything and I think that really helped me to where I am now um also in high school because I did cosmetology I would have class all day and then I would do like cosmetology in after school so like that also you know that's what I mean like just my whole life I've had a lot going on which kind of I think allowed me to to be where I am today but I think it is like also in my nature um my parents are always like you drive us crazy like just like slow down for a minute so there's good parts and bad parts with it I think but my biggest time management tips I would say is most people don't realize how much time they have it's just how they're dividing it up and I would say the busier you are the more you actually figure out that you have more time for things because you have to make time you know like if you have more free time you're more likely to delay things or be like, oh, I'll do that later because I have time. Whereas if you're super busy, it's like, I only have this hour to do this, so I'm going to get this done. And you actually end up being more productive in that manner. Um, yeah. The next thing I would say is definitely productivity. I mean, uh, sorry, prioritization because, you know, I have a lot of friends in school who say, oh, I don't get good sleep. I don't, you know, I stay up every night really late because I'm busy. I'm a student. And I always say, you know, like, I'm able to go to bed super early every day, even though I have like a full-time job and everything, but it's just about what you're prioritizing. And I didn't always do that. I, there was many nights that I, you know, sacrificed my sleep for school, but now I think I've understood more the importance of that. So it's really just about managing that and carving out time. I would say, um, for me, you know, School's really important and I have my classes and there's things I need to get done. But um, I think it also helps that I really enjoy my job. So then it like pushes me to do that. Sometimes it's hard to take myself away from my job to do school because it's like, oh, I just want to keep like making videos and editing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously, as you mentioned, like family and friends play an important role in it. I think having people in your life that understand um, your schedule and understand your goals and priorities is super important. Like me and my partner, he's also very self-motivated, self-driven. So we really respect our time um, during the week that we're both like just focused on our work and everything. And then we, you know, carve out time on the weekend to spend some time together um, and have that dedicated time. So I think like it's really important to have people in your life that support what, what you're doing and support um, your dreams. And I think anyone who doesn't and anyone who's like, oh, come on, like, you know, you don't need to be working mm -hmm. now or doing this and this and this. I think just yeah. having that conversation of being like, hey, like, I'm doing this because it aligns with my goals. It doesn't mean it aligns with yours, but like, you know, you can support me through that or or maybe they're just not, you know, the right person to have close to you. So yeah. um, that's one of my biggest things. But the second thing I just would say is a lot of people just keep telling themselves, like, I'm just too busy. I'm too I, I hear that all the time. I really try to... Um, remove the word busy from my vocabulary and people, uh, I would ask people at work, oh, how have you been? I'm just so busy. I'm just so busy. And I, when people ask me, how are you doing? I really try to like restrict myself from saying that even if I have a million things going on, because at the end of the day, like I chose to do this degree. I chose to do this job and mm -hmm. take this on. So like, although we all love complaining about stuff sometimes, I, I'm trying to like yeah. work on that and not, not be in that uh, ranting mindset where I'm complaining about things and, um, 
you know, when you are super busy, you just have to take things one thing at a time, you know, and it can get very overwhelming. But I would say writing things down and kind of being like, okay, what's top priority? Let me get this done first, you know, and then restricting yourself being like, okay, I will do this. And, you know, you have to set those boundaries with yourself in your day to, to be able to balance all those things. And I think the biggest thing to realize too, I'm I'm sorry, I, I'm going on a long tangent here, but no, it's perfect. <laughs> I don't think what I do is for everyone. And I think that's the biggest thing to recognize. Like, for example, me and my brother are very different. And you know, even though we grew up in the same household, did a lot of things the same when we were growing up, he cannot like handle uh, like the the type of schedule I have, you know, he needs more time to spend with his school. He needs more time to recharge. He needs more time alone. He can't, I recharge in social settings. So that also helps me do stuff like this and recharge for him. He would do stuff like this and then he needs that quiet time alone to, to recharge from that. So I think recognizing everyone's different. Not everyone's made for entrepreneurship or doing a million things at once. And that's fine. Everyone's built different. And I think, you know, if you need to focus on one thing at once and do that really well, do that, you know, just find the routine that works for you, but also test your limits and see, okay, could I be adding a little bit more of something I want to do um, in my life? When I, when I hear people talk about, you know, working a nine to five job and saying, oh, I wish I could run a business or start a project or start a hobby. I'm like, well, you can just like carve out a little bit of time. It doesn't have to be a full commitment of 40 hours a week, but like, three hours a week that you just put into a passion project if you really want to do that. But again, like it has to come from, yes, I really want to make this change. But um, I would say don't, yeah, the biggest thing is like really try to actually realize what you're using your time with, where you can be more productive if you want to. And that's where you'll be able to have more time management. Yeah. So the secret to actually productivity is to be, to do what you love doing. Because when it gets, uh, you have too many things that you kind of feel like, I need to do this because other people do this, you yeah. get overwhelmed, right? Definitely. And there's things like you have to do. Like I, I, I have a midterm tomorrow. Do I want to study for it? No, like it's not something I want to do, but I have to do it. So there's definitely things that you're going to have to do and carve out the time for. Um, but you have to really, I think the part there, um, Dimitro is going back to, okay, what's my goal? I'm going to study for this midterm, even though I don't want to, because my goal is to get my degree, you know? So it's, even though I don't want to do the task itself, it's working Mm. towards something I love. There's things in my job. I love this job, but there's things that like administrative work, emails. I don't love doing emails, but like it's part of the the package and I have to carve out time for it if I want to, um, make this work. So I think just like looking into your routine and being like, okay, where can I actually, you know, cut down some time. If I spend mm-hmm. four hours watching Netflix every day, can I make it three hours and just spend an hour, you know, doing something productive? Um, and that's not necessarily, you know, something that social media or people say is productive. Like, what do you want to work on? Whether that's a business or going to the gym, like make time for it. Um, yeah, the biggest thing, if, if something's really important to you, just make time for it and stop like necessarily just building excuses. If, mm-hmm. if you don't want to do something, just say, I don't want to do that thing. But saying oh i want to start a business or i want to go to the gym but i just don't have time for it like you need to just figure out ways to make it work for you right as a way do you feel sometimes guilty if you want to relax and do nothing <laughs> definitely yeah <laughs> I, I have a really hard time um sitting still and i would say when i sit down to relax or watch a show i'll usually end up like watching the show and then editing something on my phone or posting content so it, it's very hard for me i think the issue with that too is because when I have free time, that's the only time I can like get my work done. Mm -hmm. And because this started out as like a hobby for me um, and I've been in school like my whole life, I always use my free time to film videos. Like that was what I did Mm -hmm. for fun, you know? So now that it has turned into a job, it's definitely changed that dynamic. So um, yeah, it's definitely hard to find time or like when I have a day off let's say like I usually spend the whole day working just to get stuff done so um yeah I definitely do feel guilty when I just like don't do anything because I'm like oh I should be doing something which is something I need to work on personally of just like allowing myself to um do nothing sometimes but also um that's not necessarily what makes me happy so I think for for someone who needs that time to recharge needs that time um kind of to do nothing to feel better. I think that's really important. But for me, sometimes that can just send me into like an anxious, not so good feeling. So I'd rather, you know, 
go on a walk or, or hang out with friends and spend my time doing that, that, that actually recharges me in the end. Yeah. And Lavinia, how do you usually plan your day? Do you plan like a, a hat or how it happens? Yeah, definitely like plan ahead. I would say having like calendar and a, a schedule definitely helps, but um, also just being super flexible as well helps me too. Um, you know, like if there's 10 things I need to do today, um, I find it easier than like setting exactly the time I need to do those things. Like that can help mm -hmm. too, but you know, things jump up in the middle of the day. I find rather saying, okay, I'm going to spend um, from this hour to this hour doing these things tasks you know and kind of working through them that way um helps me for sure and yeah planning my week is very important like next week i'm i'm traveling so this week i need to look ahead and be like okay mm -hmm. since i'm gone next week what do i need to get done so that i'm not falling behind um and that i'm meeting like all my deadlines for work and school and, and all of that for sure so it's definitely good to have like i think some type of schedule and i think when you're also self-employed it can be easy to kind of push things off and be like i don't need to do that but like Yeah. Setting those deadlines for yourself, like, okay, I'm doing this today, like, this is due this day, can can really help. Yeah, talking about productivity, like, uh, I read that uh, one of the cases of uh, having anxiety or being stressful is uh, not knowing what to do. Like, when do you, yes. you don't plan your things, you just don't know what to, where to start from. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it does kind of come from, and, and even, you know, when people procrastinate, like I, I procrastinate all the time when it, especially when it comes to school, it's more just because you don't know exactly where to start. It's not necessarily because you don't want to do it, um, mm -hmm. or it's lack of knowledge, you know, or lack of preparation, um, for sure. Like even for, let's say like an exam at school, right? A lot of times when people are super stressed about an exam, it's because they don't know the content. That's why they're stressed, right? If you come in super prepared, you might still have a bit of that anxious test writing, but you'll feel a lot more confident going into it. So I, I totally agree with that there. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Lavinia, looking forward, like what are some goals or dreams that you are working towards uh, both personally and uh, professionally? For sure. Um, Definitely, like, I have a lot of, you know, things that I want to do um, in this space, in, like, the skin positivity space. I mean, I want to keep having, like, these conversations in a more meaningful way than just, like, a makeup tutorial or a video online. Like, I want to continue growing, like, the Loud Talk space, um, both mm -hmm. online and offline. I would love to do some sort of, like, talks and stuff, like, in person, um, outside of, like, just um, online. And then, um, yeah, I, I have a lot of goals for like the Lavinia Rosanda brand personally, but then also with nine to five, like that is a whole separate brand. I don't think that brand is, is me. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused. It's they, they think I'm the face of the brand. No, I'm, I'm a founder of the brand, <laughs> but I'm not the face yeah. of it. Like if you go on the social media, like I'm barely on the socials, like, you know, I'm not the face of the brand. That's not the message we're trying to send with nine to five. So I have goals of growing that brand separately because I want to, you know, have, have something that's not attached to my face and my name um, as well and kind of show my skills through, through that as well. So that's definitely a huge goal. Um, graduating, I, I'm excited to graduate next year and that's that's a big goal for me. Um, and then, you know, just just continuing my, my message here. Um, you know, I have, we have some exciting products in the works that I can't say too much about right now, but um, with the brand uh, 9 to 5 that I do also think kind of relate to to my content as well. But mm -hmm. um, I do want it to obviously be its own standalone brand. Um, yeah, what else there um, this year? I think, yeah, my big focus this year, I, I also don't like to plan like too, too far ahead in the future because I think everything can change so fast, even like in a few months. Absolutely. So yeah. this year, you know, main goal for the next year is, yeah, graduating, you know, working to expand the brand and just continuing to spread my message online. And then yeah, after I graduate, we'll, we'll see from there what, what kind of path I, I go on. You know, like I, I really like how you describe your goals. And um, for me personally, in the past, I had literally dreams, writing Like new year resolutions. I want to right. heal my skin. I want to fix my skin. I want to fix my health. And so it was the main focus. It was the main life purpose mm -hmm. in the past. I think you went, went through the same stage and you yeah. left it, right? Absolutely. I think even this year, like um, when I was, yeah, creating kind of my vision board and everything, even for like my fitness goals, I didn't say like, oh, I want to look this certain way or I want my skin. Mm -hmm. like I, I literally put on my vision board, like get this many hours of sleep this year, you know, like um, 
like do this many laps of swimming. Like I, I set goals that just like, you know, have more intention behind them rather than, and like maybe yeah, through that, it will probably help my health, help my skin. Like, you know, it will help that as well. But I think you're totally right in making, you have to really think about the intention of your goals and are you like focusing on the result or are you focusing on the journey? Yeah, yeah I love it so much. And uh, for me, it was also, personal choice when I realized that I want finally to do sports for myself and yeah. for my health, but not how my butt look li- looks like yeah. or how do I have apps or not? How would other people judge me or not? But finally, how my body feels. Do yeah. I feel stretched or not? Do I feel sick or not sick? Health or not health? That was the main goal. Absolutely. Yeah, it's so important. And that's kind of going back to the whole um social media thing too um Dimitro when you asked me like for tips for content creators who kind of want to get in it for like the benefits like you have to really think about the intention behind it like why are you doing this what's the message you're sharing with the world and yeah if you get the results same with the fitness journey if you get abs or get like that's cool but like what why was the bigger reason behind it and I think that's what we all need to focus on with all aspects of our life is like what's my intention behind behind this yeah exactly I'm going to the gym and there is there is this guy there He's six years old, but he looks at maybe 40. And he has amazing physique, amazing. Yeah. Once I asked him, like, how does he train, you know? And he said he'd, he's been doing it for 40 years. 40 years every day. Yeah. And for him, it's like, a, it's, it's his life. It's, it's like, it's his lifestyle. It's yeah. Him, like, it's part of his life, I think. He just can't imagine not doing this. Exactly. And I think that's what a lot of people don't get to in, even with, like, any work or anything you're trying to get towards it's not like an overnight thing where you can just like you know like on social media people would probably ask that guy what's your workout routine i want to look just like you and it's like well he's been doing it for so long that that's yeah. why he has those results it's not like he just used a magic product or did a magic workout routine once and it's like boom like he it's all about consistency and and the mindset he probably had to um invest in himself and in his future that way that's yeah. really inspirational for sure people want to hear easy solutions what yeah. you answer guys just disappointment for many people they want fast easy solutions definitely definitely they do yeah and uh lavinia i have the last question sure what advice would you give young yourself if you had this possibility um i would say like the biggest things are you know kind of slow down don't stress like everything everything will come at its time. And that's kind of going back to the conversation we had earlier with any disappointment I might've felt with like social media, like everything has its time and comes at the right time. Um, the second thing I would say is don't stress so much about a grade because I was like so crazy about, you know, like if I didn't get a hundred on a test, like I would feel like I personally failed. And now it's like, like, I, I don't even, I don't, look back and think oh yeah that one exam I wrote four years ago that really impacted me like no I don't remember it right so um just taking like less pressure like taking away some pressure from from school for sure um and then the last thing just like yeah like always um I'm just like proud of like the the little girl who just started doing what she loved and didn't really care about any haters or or judgment at school because I see so many were like yeah I started a channel when I was younger but like I got bullied and um I didn't keep going with it so I'm just I'm just proud of that that little girl for just keep um keep posting and not really focusing on what other people have to say thank you so much thank you so much for verse so this was Lavinia Rosanda amazing content creator and person who inspires millions of people worldwide through many social media platforms thank you thank you thank you so much for you yeah thank you to both of you for for having me on i i really enjoyed this and it was it was kind of nice to be on like the flip side of the the questions i i usually am asking everyone else these <laughs> questions. it was cool uh, yeah. yeah we hope you felt comfortable definitely yeah, yeah. Thank you. so yeah uh, guys um please follow us follow lavinia we will link we will add all the links in the in the description box follow us through all the channels YouTube, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, TikTok, and so on. So, yeah, this uh, conversation was super inspiring, and we are looking forward for your feedback as well. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lavinia. Thanks. Thanks.
If you enjoy this episode and want to stay updated with our future content and support what we are doing, don't forget to give it a thumb up, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss our latest episode.